So here's the bioreactor now. This is around about I think two weeks since the last update. You can see we've got the light panel working and then if we come around the back here uh, you can see that I've added a, a motor control, plugged in a few motors in the lights. Um, I've mounted the Raspberry Pi on the back there. Let me walk around. With a cooling tower which is bringing down the CPU temperature of the Raspberry Pi uh, an awful lot. So it's around about 34 degrees or even less than that sometimes. Uh, so that's actually helping out a lot because I'm doing all the programming for the Pi Reactor on the Raspberry Pi itself rather than transferring it from uh, a more powerful computer. Um, we now, so we have the air pump that's working. Here we have the fan with the heatsink and the Peltier modules in here. Um, they're working, however, the power required for the Peltier module is just too much for the chips that I have on um, this motor control on the back here. So if I zoom in here, you can see that I have the, uh, so we have a PWM chip, which is just, um, runs a, a t takes a I squared C, and then we turn that into 16 channel PWM, and then we run that into a motor controller, which I've got a heatsink on this one, and the one down the bottom here, because they're the ones that are from the heat, uh, heaters, the Peltier modules. So they're just drawing a lot of power, but they're just getting too hot. So I'm going to have to upgrade these components here, and I've just sent in the circuit board um, with some upgraded components. This is how I've been soldering the circuit boards. You can check out the solder there. This is just out of the oven. You can see some of the ones like that one there, the solder legs the legs of the IC is soldered together. There's meant to be two together, but there's three there. But we'll just have to fix that up with the soldering iron. But this little oven thing, I got this for $25 from Kmart. And you just put the board in there. And then away it goes. Also, I made a mistake with the Tinsy. Uh, the Tinsy L LC, the low-cost Tinsy, in that I connected the um, serial data and serial clock lines onto not the primary ones. Um, so what I've had to do is sort of run uh, the serial data line and the serial clock line from the primary ones into where I've connected on this board. That's why the Tinsy is out here and not um, fitting snug on top. Let me zoom out a bit. Um, the other thing I did, I forgot, pull up resistors on the uh, data and clock lines, so I had to add them on the on the uh, tin C itself. So anyway, that's all um, fixed in the next version. In terms of the PWM signal provided by uh, that 16 channel PWM output, you can get up to around about, well, between 40 and... Uh, 1,600 hertz, but uh, as you can see on the camera, the LEDs are flashing because of the shutter speed on the camera itself. So I actually want to bring up that um, PWM frequency all the way up past around about 2,000 uh, kilohertz, and then that way for all the motors and um, fans and lights we have way more control and then we also you won't be able to hear the motors so if I play the uh, if I turn on the motor here for mixing you can hear this PWM whine so let me just turn that off and that's at its max frequency of uh, 1600 Hertz but now instead of using a chip so this is the circuit board here Instead of using this PWM chip here, I'm just going directly from a Tinsy, so I'm using the Tinsy 4.1, which has a 600 megahertz processor on it. And then I'm running, because it has so many outputs on the 
I'm actually can run all the motor controls uh, from the Tensi itself through the PWM from the Tensi. And so that means I can actually get uh, any sort of um, output. You do trade off the resolution of the analog um, PWM output as you uh, increase the frequency of the PWM, but I think we can find a good middle ground where we can get 12-bit output from the PWM and get around about 30,000 kilohertz um, with the controller. So in terms of what I've got going on the scripts for, we can now change um, the color of the lights and everything. So if I want to turn on red, so I just type in R, so that's giving us a signal of what uh, channel we want to change. And then we can type in a, um, a value, and this is just a value between, uh, this is a 12-bit value, so I'm just going to put in 400. And then when I click enter, you can see the red channel turns on at that, that sort of um, intensity. So, yeah, so that gives you an idea of sort of the baseline of where we're at. The other thing I've added here is a lid uh, with a temperature probe in it. So if we want to measure temperature, we just come over to the computer. Uh, we just type in T, temperature, and we get the temperature there, 20.19 degrees Celsius. So that's actually a fairly good probe, which is just a normal temperature probe, but placed inside a thermo well. So we can actually clean this because it's stainless steel really well. So that's a, a really good part. And additionally, rather than having the control unit up on the top here, I'm actually going to put the motor control all the way on the back here, and that way it's out of the road. We don't have so many wires, so as you can see, there's wires everywhere at the moment. So we've got to clean all that up. So this is the user interface so far. We've got that chart now on the first uh, page here. So now we're going to add some sort of ticks on the left-hand side. Uh, so we can select different parameters and everything like that. We'll also add some other ticks on the other side for different different parameters, sort of separate photosynthesis from general parameters. Then we'll across the bottom here we might put some sort of a, uh, like what we have up the top here with these toolbars, we'll put a toolbars down the bottom here for just the graph. The motors and lights, uh, so we can now turn them on and off so by clicking these buttons here. So they're all off now, and then we can uh, turn them on and set the intensity with this slider over here. So now we get super, super bright and we can put on other colors. So then we also have this frequency here on the right hand side, so that's the same as before, but um, now what we're going to do is rather than have it between 40 and 1600 hertz, it's going to be all the way uh, from zero to uh, around about 30,000 kilohertz. Uh, 30,000 hertz, yeah. Uh, and that's going to make our life a lot easier um, in terms of controlling each one of these things. Because in this user interface, it sort of says that we can have different frequencies for all of these um, channels. But in reality, we can only, uh, we actually have to set the same frequency um, with the old setup uh, for each one of these things. Then we still have the same before, um, these all set up. So I've got to be, do a bit more work here. And then, yeah, we've got the temperature settings and everything like that. So anyway, the next bit, yeah, getting the graph working. We also want to just plot the live data. I don't know how I'm actually going to handle the data management. I think the best way to go about it would be to create an Excel file. And then this, this graph here just references that Excel file. Um, that way we don't have to store anything in arrays or anything like that. It's just purely referencing, um, yeah, the CSV file.